Hey, there's Wisconsin Wine Guy. I am back with another wine review. Again, for those of you who are new, this is a new year. New wines are different wines, different vintages, you know, but there's lots of wine going back to 2018 for you to look back and check out and find some wines that you like. So these wines are wines that you can find on the shelves of your everyday liquor store, grocery store, and some wine shop shelves. I give these wines a taste to give you my opinion, what I think about these wines, utilizing my infamous thumb rating system. Thumbs up meaning that I recommend this wine. You know, I want you to try this wine. I think it's a good wine. It's a solid wine. Can't go wrong with it, you know, but give it a try. Let me know what you think. Then I us know what you think. Three quarters. You know what? I was at a party or if I were at a party and this wine was poured, oh my gosh, I'm digging this wine. And you know what? If I like it that much, I may even share it with my friends. Halfway? Mmm. There was something about that wine that is missing a step for me. But that's my palate. Your palate is completely different. You know, so you give it a try and let us all know what you think. Thumbs down? Well, that's always an easy one. You know, <laughs> you know that's, that's just not working. And I also tell you why it's not working for my palate. So let's get to today's wine review. You can see I got three wines for me. You can probably make the label out line 39. We all know line 39. You know, 39 represents the 39th parallel, you know, that runs, you know, closest to uh, Northern California, but cuts straight through California, you know, and that's how they named the wine because they're in the 39th parallel. You know, and wines are, these are produced from different vineyards in that parallel uh, from California. So, so they don't have a designated vineyard, but they, they, put, they uh, source grapes from different areas along the coast. You know, Sonoma area, you know, uh, so it's going to be interesting, you know, tasting these wines. Line 39. So I'm going to be doing the Pinot Grigio. So we have a 2020 Pinot Grigio. Pinot Pinot. 2019 Pinot Noir. And we're going to be doing the 2020 Sauvignon Blanc. So the Sauvignon Blanc and the, the uh, Pinot Noir are two varietals that I reviewed in earlier reviews, previous years, I should say. So now we have new vintages. I'm always I'm so jazzed when I get new vintages of a wine, you know, because I, I do the review, then I can go back and look and see what I said about the wines and see if the, the uh, grade is the same or the rating is the same. How cool is that? So now my tasting order is going to be slightly different. You know, some people go, you know, whites before reds, dry before sweets, you know, but anytime for me, anytime there's Sauvignon Blanc in the mix, for the most part, Sauvignon Blanc goes last because it's, it's such a, a dominant flavor profile and the acidity in some Sauvignon Blancs is just, just so dominant, it's going to kill everything else that comes behind it, all right? There's your wine tip for tasting. You have to make some exceptions to the rule, as with everything. So I'm going to pour them all. You know, I always enjoy screw cap, screw caps on two, regular cork on the other, but Hades cork is taking care of that. I always like tasting multiple wines from the same winery, you know, and for me, it gives me an idea of what that winemaker's hand is like when producing, you know, wines and the different tiers of wines that they produce. You know, I want to know, are, are, they, are they more fruit oriented, you know, are they more oak oriented? Even if it's a wine that's oak, I don't know, it can still be, if it's oak, it can still be fruit, you know, dominant fruit oriented, or uh, are they more expressive of acidity? You know, I mean, so different winemakers have a different philosophy in making their wines, just like a chef. So some chef, you don't want to have more salt, some chefs want to have less salt, right? Right? There you go. So let's put the wines up here in front view so you can see them. So now, I'm going to give you a look at it. So here's the Pinot Grigio. Now, Pinot Grigio, we all know Pinot Grigio, you know, coming out of Italy. Right, you know, and the Italian Pinot Grigio is going to be different from the domestic Pinot Gris and also domestic Pinot Grigios, even though they're the same grape. Isn't that crazy? The same grape, but they actually produce different wines. But the thing is, is this the Pinot Grigio is produced in warmer climates, going to give you more depth, more fruit, versus in other climates, give you more acidity. Cooler climates give you more acidity, right? Right, there you have it. But you can also have microclimates in the warmer region or area that can produce, you know, more acidic type uh, wines versus more fruit death type wines. Simple explanation, right? So here's our Pinot Grigio. We have on our Pinot Grigio, this is kind of clear, 
clear, yellowish. You don't like what yellow hues, but kind of clear with yellow hues. All right, the Pinot Grigio, you know, I find typical from, you know, domestic type Pinot Grigios. Wow. Mm, that nose. It's going to be apple. Apple and lemon. Mm, wow, apple and lemon on that nose. For sure for me. Woo! And, and subtle grassy. Subtle, right? That, that, that's, that's that for me. On the Pinot Grigio. Taste of the Pinots. A Pinot Noir. It's going to be aged in both French and American oak. Ah, wow. I mean, you, 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 can't, you can pick up the spice, pick up some of that, you know, that, that, that roundness of vanilla here. But then that fruit, that cherry fruit, it almost makes it, it, almost makes it smell like a, 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 a dry cherry that's been rehydrated, right? <laughs> it's almost like here. You know, but nice. Woo! You definitely pick up on that, that American oak. Now for the Sauvignon Blanc. Oh, you look at that color. Forgot to give you the color, right? So that color, again, it's not as light as some of the Pinot Noirs coming from Europe, but not as dark as some of the Pinot Noirs that come out of California. You know, this is right in the middle, you know? So we're going to go with a, a Garnet to Ruby on this one here, right? Now, for our Sauvignon Blanc, see that? We have subtle green and gold hues kind of like blended in you know like when that sun is shining through the water you know all right that's what we get here mm. ah wow grapefruit with notes of melon in the background grass and minerality here wow that's something there's a lot going on here with this Pinot Grigio you see why I'm not gonna do that before these and I gotta be careful that when I go back through, when I cycle back through for the actual taste, that I give these a little bit more tasting until I get back to this one, all right? So let's go through the taste. We're tasting now first for acidity on each of these. Pinot Grigio. So 2020 Pinot Grigio, and we're coming in at alcohol at 13.5%. I'm going to say this, you definitely pick up that lemon, you know, you ever had like lemon water, <laughs> you know, when you put, you know, more lemon, less water, but you definitely pick up on the lemon characteristics of this, and then in the background, in the finish, you pick up on the apple, you know, so acidity is like soft, though, you know, so it makes it, acidity is soft, but makes it just like a, a smooth drink, okay, boom. Well, Something that's just go down quick and easy. That's that one. Now, we're going to do the Pinot Noir. I think this is my first time sampling, uh, reviewing their uh, Pinot Grigio. Wow. Nice acidity, very well blended, but that flavor, man. I mean, everything's happening in this Pinot Noir. You know, it finishes nice and smooth. Nice, nice long finish. Medium to long finish. Wow, that, that's nice. That's really nice. So here we go. The Sauvignon Blanc, and when we go back to here, things may change, but here we go. So that, that's pretty nice. You know, nice acidity. Everything's well balanced in the Pinot Noir. And again, that's 2019. So we on blog is 2020, right? 2020. All right. Nice grapefruit, you know, which is what I look for in uh, Sauvignon Blanc, but not killer, 
Not like eh, grapefruit, but just very nice, mellow, real grapefruit. Not a red grapefruit, but just a regular traditional grapefruit. You know, melon notes, you know, blended in, you know, a nice finish. Acidity is going to be like medium, you know, it's not going to be killer. You know, so very nice, very nice, pleasant, but nice and flavorful, very crisp, very clean. So now let's go through and let's do our rating. First, Pinot Grigio, but across the board, we they don't skip on the fruit. So I'm going to say they like to have an ex true expression of the fruit itself. That's my take on this winemaker. I could be wrong, but that's my take in tasting these three wines. Mm. I like that lemon taste. I like the apple. I like the finish. Then you also, it's dry. That's nice dry finish, but the fruit never skips. I even picked up a little hit. Subtle hits of fennel on this. It is very subtle. And I like that. You know? So I'm gonna go three quarters on um Pinot Grigio. I, mean, I think it's, it's a nice, decent drinking Pinot Grigio. Maybe, maybe light, maybe uninteresting for some, but you really have to taste and let it just melt, just just, just fill out your, your, your palate, you know, and really taste it to get all of those taste sensations. But I don't argue it's an easy drink. It just goes down easy. All right? It almost seems, but it's very light at 13, what is it, 13.5? Very light tasting, but it has a good flavor to it. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to go three quarters on that one. Pinot Noir. I mean, just that nose. I mean, wow. That nose makes me think about, oh, I should have this with some, some meat. It doesn't have to be steak. It could be chicken, you know, with, you know, different spices on it. But it just makes me think that. I mean, it, it's we're at uh, 14.5 percent. Oh wow! Mm. Mm. I mean, there's some depth to this Pinot Noir. I mean, it's really nice. A lot of character, a lot of flavors going on there. Wow, that that's pretty nice. You know, so I'm gonna go a thumbs up on the line 39 Pinot Noir. Three quarters on a Pinot Grigio, thumbs up on the line 39 Pinot Noir. I mean, that's that's really nice. It kind of reminds me of Russian River Valley Pinot Noirs. Kind of reminds me of that. You know, so they did a good job with this one. Wow. Doesn't skip on the fruit. You know, the fruit's right there, but there's a lot of other character and complexity is happening there. Now, for some of y'all blunt. Now, what can you say about some of y'all blunts? If it's not crisp, if it's not clean tasting, you know, grapefruit, dominant taste to it. You know, can be grass, can be mineral. You know, all these are dry, you know, but it has a nice fruitiness to it. They make sure the expression of the fruit is there. You know, so the Sauvignon Blanc. I'm gonna go thumbs up. I'm digging this. I mean, it's it's nice. It's a nice Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, especially when you're tasting all the wines in a row. So here, there you have it. Three quarters, Pinot Grigio. Thumbs up, Pinot Noir. Thumbs up on a Sauvignon Blanc. Solid wines. I think they're, they're, they're a good taste in these particular vintages. I'm curious to find out what I rated the previous vintages on uh, these two wines. So there you have it. Wisconsin Wine Guys say to you as always, let your palate be the guy when selecting your wine. And I'm going to finish off with this Pinot Grigio. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have this with some food. I'll see you next time. Ciao.